In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As The Lord be with you. And with 
Let us pray. O Lord, we implore you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because she cannot continue in safety without your aid, preserve her evermore by your help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this, the 15th Sunday after Trinity, is recorded in 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. And so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks, and I, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 5 and 6. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things when the one, with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. 
Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was made by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drug-making companies across the United States and around the world are in various phases of clinical trials to find the vaccine. Some estimates say there are 26 of such clinical trials going on in our country now alone. And it's possible that the vaccine for COVID-19 will be available before the end of this year. At that time, we'll perhaps have won the battle against this disease, but we will not have won the war. Why? Because a far different and deadly disease will exist even after COVID. It's called idolatry. It's a real reason why we worry about the future. We don't trust God. We are by nature idolaters. Idolatry then by definition is worship of any false god. All sin is idolatry. Therefore all sinners are idolaters. We are Christians and this means that we have been delivered from idolatry and from every other sin. We have been brought into God's kingdom God keeps us by his grace. He forgives us all our sins. He makes us citizens of heaven. He fills us with his Holy Spirit. And we are confident that we are his children and that he will provide for us in every need of body and soul. But this is not something that we win for ourselves. It was won by the holy obedience of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by taking our place under God's law and suffering for our sins, he has, in fact, fulfilled all righteousness. His obedience and suffering is our robe of righteousness and covers us and presents us as spotless and pure saints before our God. That's the foundation that we build our houses on in this world. Belonging to Christ, being covered with his righteousness, is what makes you rich. Yet we worry. We ignore our true wealth and worry about being poor. We worry about what we will eat, about what we will drink, about what we will wear, and about our health. We worry about all sorts of things, and worrying is a form of worship, mind you. It's a form of false worship. It's a form of idolatry. Idolatry is worshiping the creation instead of the creator. Do we trust in the things we need, or do we trust in the one who gives us the things we need? We who have been delivered from idolatry through the new birth of the Spirit have God's righteousness now and we rightly stake our claim on it. But we have not entered the completeness of his righteousness yet. The kingdom of God here on earth is wherever the gospel is preached and where the sacraments are administered. These are the means of grace by which God delivers his righteousness to us, these means work faith in our hearts. The Holy Scriptures say that flesh and blood cannot inherit these things, but it must, we must be born from above. Still, sinful flesh continues to cling to us. God has delivered us from sin, but our sinful nature still remains hanging on to us until the day that we die. So we must do battle against idolatry, even within our hearts. We worry. We look at what we need, and we wonder, how will it be provided? We only make so much money. What are we going to do? What if we get sick? What will insurance cover? We know we aren't really in control, and this means that we can't know whether we'll be provided for or not. 
if we were in control, we would be provided for. Isn't that right? Nope. It's not. Not being in control puts somebody else in control. And that someone else is our Heavenly Father. Christ teaches us to call him our Father who art in heaven. Our Lord teaches us that our Heavenly Father feeds the birds of the air and clothes the grass of the field. He keeps this world in his fatherly care. He provides every living creature with what it needs, and he provides for us as well. The godlessness of the last century has given way to a proliferation of false gods in our times. Atheism was a powerful intellectual movement a generation ago. Atheism, of course, teaches that there is no God. Athe- atheists are also materialists. They believe that the material universe is all that exists. There is no God, there is no devil, there is no angels, there is no heaven, there is no hell. Everything is here and now. We are to imagine that there is no heaven, no hell, no religion, and no God. But atheism doesn't work. People are by nature spiritual. And even if they reject the one true God, they will inevitably come up with gods to worship. It's human nature. People want religious satisfaction, and they will seek it in many places until they find it. They will invent gods to give them what they want. Idols rule by means of lies, false promises, manipulation, and every form of deceit. That's because they're invented by sinful men. Since the devil is a father of lies, as our Lord says, it's the devil and his demons who are behind every lure and power of a false god. And all false gods are basically the same. They're creatures claiming the status of their creator. Christ nails down the essence of idolatry when he calls it mammon. Now mammon means wealth or money or riches, things like this, the stuff that people trust in. They can see it, they can measure it, they can control it, they've got it. And when they have it, they are in charge of their lives. So they think. They aren't. Because wealth that they think puts them in control, is actually what controls them. It's their master, and they must serve their master. God or money, you can't serve both. Love and loyalty can't be divided on this one. You worship one or you worship the other. When we worry about food and drink and clothing and health and everything else that pertains to the needs and wants of our bodies, we are saying that God the Father isn't really who he says he is. Idolatry makes our God angry with jealousy, as he himself says. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Yet see how gently he rebukes us. Christ doesn't threaten us. He speaks kindly to us. Look at the birds. Consider the flowers. Use your God-given senses and think clearly. Put two and two together. If your Father in heaven cares about the birds, will he not take care of you? You're worth more than birds, aren't you? And you worry about being clothed. See how God clothes the flowers of the field, how beautiful they are. Yet their beauty is here today and gone tomorrow. Won't he clothe you too? 
you worry. And it does you no good. The God called Mammon is a liar. He teaches you to worry, but your worrying won't make you any taller, smarter, prettier, or healthier. Worrying does you no good. You aren't in charge of your life. You never were. You never will be. When you think you are, you're lying to yourself. You're bowing down to the meanest God in this world, Mammon. He does nothing but lay burden upon burden upon you. But Christ tells you that your life is more than food. Christ tells you that your body is more than clothing. True life is lived in fellowship with the one who created us and still protects and preserves us. Our true food is his body and blood. Our true clothing is a robe of righteousness with which God clothes us in holy baptism. This righteousness is invisible to the human eye. And it's infinitely of greater worth than the stuff that folks parade around in this life. Christ's righteousness is his obedience and suffering for our sake. His righteousness covers our sins. His blood washes away our sins and makes us right before God. God looks at us and he sees the obedience and the suffering of his son in our place. He sees what the world can't see but what we do by faith. And in this, we trust. He sees us as pure. He sees us as holy. He sees us as innocent. So we are, because we have Christ's righteousness. Life is more than food. The body is more than clothing. And the future is in God's hands. God won't provide for us the greater gift and turn around and deny us the lesser gift. The greater gift is his kingdom and his righteousness. The lesser gifts are food, drink, clothing, our health, and the things we need to get by in this life. It makes zero sense for God to give us the greater and deprive us of the lesser. Here's how St. Paul puts it. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? It's foolish idolatry to worry about the lesser gifts. The only cure for idolatry is the greater gift. And Christ is the true vaccine, for he died, that we might be protected from death forever. How few find this cure. It's more valuable than all the money in the world. It works with a proficiency that is above anything that's developed in a laboratory. It lasts forever and it never loses its potency. God's pure love assures us that our sins are forgiven on on account of the sake of Christ who suffered for us. The Spirit comforts us with this good news. Christ protects us from the accusations of the law and from the temptations of the devil and his lies. Our only hope in this dying world is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So seek it. Seek it first. Set it before all other things. For it is your greatest treasure. When you have it, you have nothing else to worry about. God will take care of it, whatever it is. He delivers you from idolatry. You seek him. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
our prayers for this week, remember especially all those who are sick or recovering or receiving treatment. Ron Schock, Paul Schutbach, Laverne Ludy, Liz Kimball, Linda Reinert, Bradley Hagler, Warren Stulak, Craig and Karen Kalman, Blake Fowler, Rebecca Belt, Susan Kim and Elwood Trotter, for Joyce White, Bob Stewart, Mary Orvis, Jean Kraft, and Karen Smith, all of these regarding health concerns, for David Richardson, who is in hospice care, also for Greg Goodson, Janelle Hopkins, Hal Sinclair, Jan Fowler, and Mike Kelly, who are recovering. We pray for Samantha Phillips and her unborn baby, as Samantha will be having surgery. We pray for Lisa Reck concerning health concerns. Lisa is a mother-in-law of Jared Shelp. We also continue our prayers for our country amid the current epidemic. Dear beloved, let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, be gracious to us, your baptized children. For temptations and anxieties surround us. Gladden our souls with the good news of your Son's perfect life and sacrificial death for our salvation. Strengthen us in the faith and fill us with your Spirit that we might trust in you for all things temporal and eternal. Heavenly Father, show your abundant mercy to all those whom you have called to preach Christ and him crucified. According to your gracious will, grant faithful pastors to all vacant congregations and restore to service those pastors without a congregation to serve. Heavenly Father, grant opportunities for honest and faithful labor to all, especially to the unemployed, and give all contentment and joy as we carry out our daily tasks. Heavenly Father, grant wisdom to the President, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States, to the leaders of our states and localities, and to the rulers of the world, that they would seek peace, promote life, and protect the weakest among us. Guard and protect those who serve in our armed forces and, the emergency, and emergency services, that they might serve with integrity and return home safely. Heavenly Father, give ear to our prayers for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the shut-in, the depressed, the dying, and all those in any need, especially Ron, Paul, Laverne, Liz, Linda, Bradley, Warren, Craig, Karen, Blake, Rebecca, Susan, Elwood, Joyce, Bob, Mary, Jean, Karen, David, Greg, Janelle, Hal, Jan, Mike, Lisa, Samantha and her child, and all those affected by the pandemic. Be merciful and gracious to them and strengthen them in their trials. Heavenly Father, grant that all who partake of your Son's body and blood in the fellowship of this altar today would do so in repentance and faith and to their abundant blessing. Heavenly Father, according to your will and in your time, you call all your children to rest from their labors. Receive our thanks for those who have gone before us in the faith and grant that we, who walk as yet by faith, may join them in their holy rest until that day when you rise, raise us incorruptible and immortal. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for we pray, trusting your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us a way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament, my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, let his counts upon you and give you peace.